Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And ah, ha, 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 I'm checking in on you. Who? How are you? How's it going? How's your team doing? Is your team still in the fucking playoffs? Because mine isn't. Gradually getting over this. I've been actually watching a lot of playoff hockey. What about the fucking Seattle Kraken? Knocking out the avalanche. I mean, that's fun to see, but then it's also like, I, I, you know, I wanted to watch Connor McKinnon and that kid who's the next Bobby Orr. And now they're not there. Right? Um, I have been enjoying watching the Edmonton Oilers, even though they lost last night. Uh, I watched the first, like, period and a half before my kids came downstairs from their bath. And then suddenly we were, what the hell did we end up watching? Oh, the, the Pink Panther. Um, I like the earlier ones where it's just, you know, Henry Mancini's, uh, music, but then in the late 70 ones, they, they sort of, they, they re-recorded it. And you know, what's funny now that I'm all jaded and in this business, it's like, they didn't want to keep paying them. So they fucking re-record it, you know? Like Ozzy and What's Her Face did with the fucking Bark at the Moon albums or whatever they did to fuck over the drummer and the bass player. They re record the thing. And then uh, then they added this shit music. I can't remember how it went. It was stuck in my head in a fucking loop. Anyway, ended up watching that. But I'll tell you right now, that, that fucking goal last night. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm fighting off a cold here. Leon Dreisaitl. You know what's amazing? Okay. For those of you who didn't see it, he was like, like parallel to the net. So there's no way you can score. There's, this, there's like fucking two inches of clearance above the goalie's shoulder. He flips it up off his back, which is he's not the first guy to do it. All right. But he's doing it at the NHL level in a playoff game. I know other guys in the NHL have done it. But like what's amazing is because like the goaltender actually – when the puck went behind him, he freaked out and he turned around. It, it hit his right shoulder and he turned to the right. And I guarantee fucking to you, like, like kids coming up now, they're going to learn how to stop that shot. Because I was thinking he wanted to turn the other way. <laughs> He's got to bat it out with his shoulder. You know who might have saved that? Was, uh, who is that fucking lunatic who headbutted the puck? Goaltender from way back in the day. Uh, he had the birdcage mask. What the fuck was his name? Played for Buffalo. One with the Red Wings. Oh, Jesus. Ken Dryden? I can't remember his fucking name. But anyway, I've been enjoying the hell out of watching uh, the Edmonton Oilers. And Connor McDavid, Jesus Christ, when that guy gets the fucking puck and turns on the Jets, all of a sudden everybody in there looks like they're in fucking AAA, or Thunder Bay, whatever the fuck you call the minor leagues of hockey. And he just creates so much goddamn space and everybody, you can just see like the defense is just like, you know, hold your possession, hold your possession. Like, oh, fuck, he's got the puck. And I think they just get like mesmerized by him. And then just one of the, you know, either Dreisaitl or fucking Evander Kane just moves ever so slightly north or south. And then they're just wide open for a one timer that goes into the back of the net. It's fucking amazing. Amazing hockey to watch. Unlike what I watched in the series between the Bruins and the Panthers. Although, how about those Florida Panthers going up there, taking away home ice from the fucking Toronto Maple Leafs? I still don't fucking understand that. That if there's four... if (laughs) Going through puberty on this podcast. When there's four games in your building and there's three games in their building, mathematically, there's no fucking way they're taking away home ice. All right, we lost the game, but we're still playing four in our building. That's still going to happen. If we go seven games, there's still four in my building. So what the fuck are you talking So now you won. All right, now it's three and three. Uh, it, just does, it doesn't make any fucking... I just think that's this stupid fucking thing that they say to try to add drama. Speaking of drama, Jesus Christ, me defending... Uh, I don't even watch hoop. I haven't watched hoop since they had the safe space underneath the fucking rim. You know, 
the hey you, you can't stand here you know you can drop off your kid at school but you got to get the fuck out of here that little that little zone there you know once guys started dunking on nobody and started screaming like they're in 300 that i just kind of <laughs> it's so dumb it is so fuck why can't the defensive player be underneath there i get the offensive pl- i even then I just post up i miss that shit the fucking battles underneath Two seven-footers going at it. I mean, that was the best. Fucking Kareem posting up against fucking Parrish. And then him getting his little forearm out as he turned to do the sky hook. That's all fucking gone. <clears throat> now he's out there fucking... The seven-footers are out there shooting like a fucking point guard. We already got one of those. I just... It's, it's, it's redundant. Bill, we get it. You don't like the NBA. I like the way things were. Back when women drank wine coolers. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Don't listen to me. Um, anyway, um, how about the Florida Panthers coming in and winning game one against the Maple Leafs? And you knew they would. You knew they would. What are the Maple Leafs going to do? Make it easy on their fans? What, are they going to be up in a series? They're always going to be crawling out of a fucking hole. And the day they go up three games to none, you know they're losing the next three games. I'm not saying they're going to lose game seven. Maybe this isn't your parents' Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe this isn't your grandparents' Toronto Maple Leafs. How many generations have gone by? I mean, I feel like I have to root for the Maple Leafs in the East. Um, I'm not going to do that cunty thing where I'm going to root for the Florida Panthers because they beat my team and then somehow if they win the Stanley Cup... It doesn't feel as bad. It's going to feel bad. All right? It still feels bad. My family is feeling the effects of the loss. I'm sitting over in the corner in the dark. Dad, what's the matter? You want to play shoots and ladders? I don't feel like it. Um, No, I'm not taking it to that level. Um, But I I think as far as the, um, the West, I really enjoy the Edmonton Oilers. I like watching them play. You know what's funny is I fucking hate Carolina. I hate the fucking Carolina Hurricanes because I forget what year it was. They beat us in like a game seven. It was a clinching game. I can't remember. And the guy who scored the goal dropped his stick and he skated down the ice doing like jazz hands. He was like doing Fosse. Like his hands were up over his head. He was like, oh! (laughs) It's actually... Whoever did that, it was great because it made it extra annoying that he scored a fucking overtime goal against us. You know, you want a guy to score a goal and then act like a man afterwards. You know the way Messier would just put both arms up and have that stoic look on his face? Messier had that jaw that looked like it was made out of granite. You know, you can take, I mean, as hard as it is, you can take when a guy like that scores a goal. But when a dude scores a goal and then he looks like he's, he's conducting the glee club as he fucking goes down. You know, hold that note. (laughs) Fucking, I'll never get old. It is so, it's such a fucking petty reason to not like the Carolina Hurricanes. But that is is the reason why. It's the reason why I don't like those fuckers. Um, Anyways, not to mention there used to be the Hartford Whalers. Uh, Speaking of petty, oh my God. Like me defending, uh, I was saying, uh, the dude there, Giannis, Giannis, however you say his fucking name, Ante Tecumpo, uh, I, I got more goddamn sports fans writing into me. Going, I'm sorry, Bill, that was a bad take. Okay, if you're a number one seed and you lose to a team that played in, that is a failure. You know, I just think that's just such like a one-dimensional way of looking at that. Because obviously it's a failure. Obviously, it's a massive failure. You know, I just was looking at the motivation behind the fucking question, which I kind of felt like the guy asking the question was excited, you know, that this fucking giant guy that looks like he's chiseled out of granite had a, had a failure. And he, he needed him to say that he felt like a failure so he could feel better about leaving the arena in his Honda CRX and going home and banging a four. <laughs> That's what I think. 
I think I, that, that guy had, what do they call that, big dick energy? That guy had sweater vest energy. That guy had, you know, in the dance club, up against the wall, I can't dance. None of these chicks are going to go for me. You know, if I was actually really mature, I would have empathy for the sports writer too and not just the athlete. I always feel like those fucking... Those fucking sports writers, they, they're so close to it. They're so close to the money and the cars and the pussy and the glory, but they don't get to touch it. <laughs> it just drives them nuts. And every once in a while, hey, Tom Brady, like, what do you think? Can you say that your hair is a little, doesn't look quite as good as it did yesterday? <laughs> do you have more of a bedhead today? Do you think do you consider yourself a failure you know, they'll say shit like that. Like, it doesn't even fucking make sense. It's a guy put, he put fucking Milwaukee back on the map as far as an NBA power. They were dormant for 50 fucking years. The last time they won, I think fucking Kareem's name was Lou Alcindor. Nixon hadn't even bugged fucking Watergate yet or whatever the fuck happened. It was a liberal conspiracy. Probably was. Probably was. And then years later, they got him back. They got the liberals back when they fucking nailed Bill Clinton for fucking (laughs) lying about a blowjob. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I love the fucking determination on his face when he he tells that lie. Like... (laughs) I mean, it's actually kind of fucking amazing. His... The conviction... I guess the stakes were so high, and he was just like, you know. I, I really feel like Hillary Clinton in a good mood would be hard enough to deal with. The last thing he needs to do is be like, all right, I stuck a cigar in a pussy. <laughs> she said he is, he's got to go sleep downstairs on the couch in the Oval Office. <laughs> How funny is that? It's just something fucking hilarious about, like, the level of that problem at that height. You know what I mean? How he can't be like, I, I, I fucking won the election. I can't get a blowjob on the side? No? I haven't earned that? I mean, how many more fucking pairs of shoes are you going to buy? That's different. Is it? That, you're, that hurts me. The way, Nah, that's a bad argument. There's really no way to get out of it. <laughs> What if you went the other way with it? I did have sexual relations with that woman. I'll tell you, I enjoyed it. She was young. It made me feel good. And I'll tell you right now, that was the best cigar I ever smoked after. <laughs> you know what's fucked up about that? Is if he actually did say that, if he was that fucking honest, like, he, I think he would get, even conservatives would have to be like, all right, man, <laughs> I kind of got to ride with this guy now. <laughs> anyway, listen, you, you guys have seen Hillary. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Um, not like he's a good looking guy. I don't know. You know what annoys me is my wife always goes, yeah, I don't know. There's just something about him. It's just amazing. Those guys like that. They just fucking, they got that it factor, you know, and they can be complete dirtbags and women still fuck like women still like that guy. You know, if he was a fucking ugly bastard. You know what I mean? He wasn't always walking around with that goofy look. I really think it's the goofy look Bill Clinton has on his face. Like, he just looks like you're going to go have a good time, but it's not going to be that deep. Like, I refuse to believe that that guy went to Oxford. I really don't even know anything about Oxford. Isn't that like England's Harvard? You know? And it's even a, a, a cut above. Like, isn't Oxford like the one thing that shuts down Harvard? Are there any memes on that? I would love to see... Th- a meme of a guy from Harvard meeting somebody that says, I went to Oxford, if that really bothers them. And when they find out they're a little closer to the fucking Illuminati. But wait, I thought I had ascended to the peak of, of power in the world. No, I actually went overseas and I went to Oxford. Yeah. And I majored in European history, whatever they do over there. That was the one thing that I thought was fucking hilarious about those peop- the people out here photoshopping their heads, the heads of their 
talentless children onto like athletes' heads and getting in at USC and shit like that. You know what the funniest fucking thing was about all of that is when they went there, their dumbass kids were able to handle the curriculum. I bet Harvard's the same way. At the end of the day, two plus two is four. Like, what the fuck are we doing here, right? You know, like MIT, I feel like if you go into MIT, you get exposed. But if you go to Harvard, you know, and you can just major in fucking literature or whatever the fuck you're majoring over. I've never sound dumber. I re- I'm going to call myself out on that. I realize that. Do you consider yourself a failure, Bill? <laughs> Oh, you guys are always asking me that question. Um, I actually think that back in the day, if I got into Harvard, that's the hardest part. I don't think being at Harvard is hard, you know, because I've met people from Harvard and I, I've, I've, you know, they're smart. <laughs> but I meet people from MIT. You can't even have a conversation with them. I mean, I don't even know what they're doing. They're like, you know, they're like, they're breaking down the universe. You know, I don't, I don't know what they're, they're doing over there at Harvard. Why am I picking on Harvard? <clears throat> I just think Harvard's the best. You know? You know, just dummies like me hate on it. But, I mean, that is the shit. Where did you go to college? I went to Harvard. Fuck you. Game over. And then all people do is, Oh, would you, daddy, get you in there? Would you go for the... Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. My daddy did get me in there. <laughs> my daddy can ruin your daddy. Oh, my God. Do you have any idea who the fuck my dad is? <laughs> that is one of my favorite fucking clips ever. I love the fire that that kid had and how much he believed in his dad. I, I'm, I'm going back years. That kid... Uh, when he got into it with the bouncer. You know, and they were sitting there. I want to say they all had on like, you know, the date rapist loafers. Ladies, if you ever go on a date with a guy and he has on a polo shirt with boat shoes and no socks, I mean, how many more signs do you need? <laughs> I would just say, watch your drink on that date. <clears throat> you know, and for, for the love of God, don't go for a drive, you know. Um, anyway, the way he just like, oh my God, like he couldn't, do you have any idea what the fuck my dad is? Like, why did, why would I know who your dad is? You little shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Um, oh God, that must've been so fucking embarrassing. I feel bad for these fucking kids that your dumbest drunk moment just lives forever on the fucking internet. And some bald old ginger like me can still make funny of you about it. And I don't even know you. I wasn't even there for fucking years later. You know? It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy what these kids are living right now. You know, this goddamn technology. Uh, I've seen more goddamn robots walking down the street out here in LA. Like robots. They're, I think, they're on wheels. They don't have feet. Once they have the feet, then that's when it becomes creepy. If they're just sort of rolling around, you know, I don't find it as creepy. But when they start, like, walking, it really is dumb if you make a robot that walks, though, isn't it? Why wouldn't you just put it on wheels? I mean, human beings even tried that with those sneakers for a while. Remember that? You'd see some kid running, and all of a sudden he was sliding across the floor like fucking James Brown, but he was on a rug. You're like, oh, my God, was, is, is that... Is that the next guy to be on Dick Clark's American Bandstand? Am I seeing an, oh, oh, he's got wheels on the back of his sneakers. Why did those things go away? You know, some uncoordinated kid really fucked himself up on those. You know, started heading towards a staircase and didn't know how to stop, you know. Like somebody in a boat without a paddle heading towards a waterfall. <clears throat> Staircases are really like the land's waterfall, you know? <laughs> I feel like you get the same injuries falling down stairs that you do going over a waterfall, you know, before you drown. Oh, man. I fell down a lot of stairs growing up. 
it's just a, it was just a part of your childhood. Um, you'd start crying. Your mother'd be like, "What happened? I fell down the stairs." God damn it! I said that a lot. Why the fuck was I always falling down? Oh, I know why. Because my head was the same size it is now when I was like eight. You know, so I really had to walk upright. If I leaned forward a little bit, you know, that was it. I was going to go right down those stairs. <laughs> Anyway, um, I got a full fucking day today. Been trying to fight off this guy. I keep getting these. I don't know. I don't get, like, I don't know what's going on with me. I think I'm just old. I take vitamins every day. I get as much sleep as I can. My son, though, oh, my God. He he's just wants to get up now earlier and earlier. And he keeps coming into our room. And we fucked up because a couple nights we just let him stay there because we were too tired to get up and then that's it. Now he thinks that he can just come in. It's fucking hilarious. He comes in at like 3.30 in the morning. He gets into bed and I'm just looking at him like, buddy, what are you doing? He just looks at me and I'll be like, water, please. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is I start fucking laughing my ass off. And then he's looking at me. He doesn't understand why I'm laughing, but he kind of has like this smile on his face as he's trying to figure out like, why is what I said so funny? And then the look of sort of innocent confusion on his face makes me laugh harder. And then he just starts laughing because he made me laugh and he just starts going like, he laughs and then in the end when he's done laughing, then he just goes, da, da water please and it just starts it all over again and then I can't go to sleep you know you can't laugh your ass off like wake up laugh your ass off at 3 30 in the morning and then go back to sleep there's something about it I don't know there's probably some egghead from MIT that can do the fucking math on that man it's gotta suck being that smart it's gotta be a painful experience you know being that smart and seeing how fucked up the world is you know, and you start explaining your ideas to someone like me. And I'm like, what, what, are, you, what are you, a fucking egg? What is this, some woke shit? That's my favorite thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that white people don't like now is like, what is this, some woke shit? <laughs> hey, do you mind taking your shoes off? I, I, I just got the rug clean. Oh, what is this, some woke shit? <laughs> Um, and you can blame the, lib the liberal white left for that, for hijacking that word and turning it into whatever the fuck they turned it into and just using it to try to fucking defeat Republicans or whatever, whatever the fuck it is they're trying to do. It's so goddamn dumb. Um, anyway, I have read some dumb shit though. Somebody was saying, you know, they're doing once again, you know, every August, like this country almost goes bankrupt. Now for some reason it's June. And they're saying if they don't print another trillion dollars that this whole fucking Ponzi scheme is over. And then you look in the comments and they go, Biden's America, right? It's fucking amazing, like, how uneducated people are to this shit. And then somebody goes, when Trump was in office, there was no wars. Can you believe that? That's probably the same guy who was saying support the troops while Trump was in office. It's like, we've been at war over in the Middle East for so fucking long that people don't even remember it. It's like, no, like, once again, you're doing this January 6th shit, all right? Conservatives, for the love of fucking God, all right? If you're gonna do what you did again on January 6th, go to the Federal Reserve, you fucking idiots. I love that they went to the Capitol. There was probably 30 people in there. Like those politicians go to work. They probably ran out the back door, called three Ubers, and that was enough for all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm cracking myself up today. I en you know what I enjoy, people? My view of the world. As I sip a green smoothie, my feet up. I really am a fucking jerk off. <clears throat> you know, I was actually talking to somebody the other day yesterday about 
the funny ways that guys become friends? Like you ever see a guy do something, right? And you're just looking at him and he's just, he does something and it's just a complete jerk off move, right? And he does it. And then you just look over at some random other dude and he's looking at you and you both, you, you do that look like fucking jerk off and he starts laughing and then you laugh and then that's it. Then you're friends with that guy. You bonded over the fact that you both saw that this fucking other dude was a jerk off. <laughs> And it's almost like the lock the door test in the Bronx tale, where it's just like, because that other guy also shared your opinion that that guy is a jerk off. Like, that's the only common connection. Like, you've, you've been vetted. I like this guy. This guy's all right. That guy's a fucking jerk off. This guy sees that he's a jerk off. We agree that the same types of people are jerk offs. We're going to get along. You know, you know what Verzi keeps sending me is that that fucking hilarious kid for the uh, the fan of the Knicks, and he gets everybody to gather around, and he'll be like, "Hey, KD, don't you wish you came to the Knicks?" And everybody's jumping up and down. That is literally my favorite fucking thing in sports right now, other than watching the number one line on Edmonton. Um, that's on the court, on the ice, my favorite thing to watch, and then. Um, the uh, watching that kid do that shit and everybody just fucking jumping up and down. That's I. That's the thing that I. I that right there, that right there. Okay, is so fucking New York. And it is what makes sports great, and that is what DJs are drowning out at all of these fucking games. The unique sense of humor that every fucking city has, the way people dress, the way they talk, like that dude's New York accent, the level that those people love, the Knicks, the, the way they're jumping up and down and that type of shit. But you go to the garden, they don't do that DJ shit. So that guy's allowed, like, like a fan like that is becoming extinct. Um, it's the number one thing that I miss at these fucking games. Like, you know, I used to go to Laker games back in the day at the fucking LA Forum. And uh, it was a completely, completely different fucking vibe. I mean, granted, they weren't that good. <laughs> but I would talk to fucking Laker fans that were there at the forum during the Showtime Lakers and all of that. You know, they were getting excited because they had Kobe and Shaq. But these, you know, Phil Jackson hadn't come there yet. It was Del Harris. So those two, you know, egos were clashing. But uh, it was just a completely uh, different energy. So anyway... Oh, now I'm getting sad. Um, <clears throat> how about the fucking Celtics coming back, winning by like goddamn 30? I missed that whole game. I turned it on. Like all the white guys on the Celtics were on the court. So I'm like, all right, we're either getting blown out or we're fucking blowing out the other team. <laughs> but um, that first game, the end of the game when we threw the ball away, when we Jason Tatum like stepped up. And then uh, I guess the guy with the Celtics didn't realize he, he'd moved up to, like, the foul line, and he just literally turned around and passed it to a guy in the 76ers. Uh, that took me back to the NCAA championship game in 1980-fucking-2 when uh, Georgetown versus North Carolina was the last time I saw that shit. <clears throat> All right, we established that I am an old fan of sports. All right, this is the podcast... This fucking cold is taking a hold of me. Of course, the goddamn fucking day before I go to Vegas. Like, I need this shit. Uh, when do you need a cold, Bill? You're right. Never. All right. That's the pod. This is the Thursday podcast. Enjoy your fucking weekend, you cunts. Uh, there'll be a little bit of uh, music in between picked up by the great Andrew Themelis. And then we'll have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Good day and God bless America and Harvard and Oxford. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for May 3rd, uh, 2015. What's going on? How's it going? How fucking are ya? Um, I'm fucking wiped out. The tour is over. The tour is over. 
Michael Corleone, Godfather Part 2, over. Um, the summer wind, it came blowing in from across that sea. That's what I feel like right now, because it's over. I linger there to touch your hair and motherfucking walk with me. All summer long, boop. We sang a song, boop, and then we did some other shit, ba do ba da ba di boop boop. Old Freckles is going back to his fucking house, his fucking house with the leaky roof that he had to repair, ba do ba do ba di boop. Those fucking cunts, those contracting cunts. Oh, Jesus. I still have one more bill with them. It goes on and on. So call Adam Carolla. He'll kick their ass. But then you look like a sap on TV. But he be doop, because you're the douchebag that had to call Adam Carolla because you're not big enough of a man to tell the contractor to go fuck himself. <laughs> Um, Jesus Christ. Anyways, I'm fucking wiped out. All right. I don't know what you want from me this week, but this is the best it's going to get. All right. This is going to be me just nice and fucking relaxed. Um, I am right now. I am in, uh, I don't even know where I am. I think I'm in Columbia, Indiana. I know what you're thinking, Bill. What the fuck are you doing there? That wasn't on the tour. That wasn't on your Southern tour. You know? Southern Tour, you know, Savannah, Georgia, Knoxville, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, Shreveport, Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, Huntsville, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Mobile, Alabama, Savannah Night in Chattanooga, Tennessee, up to Lexington, Kentucky, over to Evansville, Indiana. Um, there was nothing on there that's, <laughs> that said that you were going to Columbus, Indiana. Well, I mean, I ended up here because yesterday I went to the, uh, to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, me, Paul Verzi, Jason Lawhead, and his dad, the Hall of Fame basketball coach, Jim Lawhead. We all went to the game. Uh, the game. We went to the Derby, man. What a fucking great time. I um, highly suggest going there. Dressing like a jackass, like everybody does. Big stupid hats, bow ties. The women there. Good Lord. Uh, there's some fucking fillies over there. Beautiful women. Beautiful women. I'll tell you, they're f they, the fucking women, the fucking ladies, dude, they were crushing it right up until the early 50s. I'm telling you. <laughs> that was some fucking decades, decades of fucking derby winners, winners walking around the fucking, the, uh, the grandstand area. Um, we had great seats and, uh, Right at the, a little bit past the finish line. We just had the best time. You know what was fucked up was they, they sold, um, I don't even know how to get into this, man. They, they were selling like standing room only seats, all right? So we paid through the fucking nose to sit in a box, right? Like we donated to a presidential campaign. We were sitting right at the goddamn finish line, a little past it, a little past it. Whatever. Don't break my balls. Come on. You can see the horses. We, where we were at, you could actually see them. Start of the race, ran right by us. Then they went around the first turn, and then they kind of disappeared behind uh, some of these corporate tents in this sea of fucking sunburned humanity that was standing, just standing on the inside grass, which I don't know why you would do that. You know what I mean? I mean, why, why wouldn't you stay at home and just watch it on TV and not sit there like a bunch of fucking refugees in a tent city that had no tent for you? You know, you might as well have watched that Watch a police horse gallop by after a crackhead underneath a fucking overpass, as far as I'm concerned. All right? Infield seats are for fucking animals. All right? Unless you're young, you don't have any fucking money. All right? You have a television. It's on TV for fucking free. Why are you going to stand there? <laughs> Although I would do it. I'd do it at a NASCAR race. I'd do that in a second. I'd be on the infield because, you know, 
First of all, what I like about being on the infield is the fucking inertia when those fucking cars wipe out usually takes them to the outside wall. And I know sometimes they bang off the outside wall and then they go to the inside, but at least they hit the wall and they're starting to slow down. You know what I mean? And, go, you know, every once in a while a tire flies off and somebody loses a head or two. But that's the price you pay for getting to sit on your fucking cooler in the middle of the goddamn track. I actually had one of the best times I ever had. I went to the Indy 500 in like 1995 when most of you were like eight years old. And uh, we sat on the inside of one of the turns, brought in this giant fucking cooler. And me and my two buddies just got obliterated, you know, watching the fucking cars go by. It's hilarious. You don't see anything. You just sit on the inside of the turn. You just hear. (laughs) My voice is fucked up. That's all you would hear. You just see him go by, right? And every once in a while, somebody would hit the wall in front of you, like, oh my God, I'm going to see an accident. But you forgot they're going like 200 something miles an hour. So they hit the wall in front of you and then just go, poof, poof. they just go flying down the fucking track. So you don't really see it. You see him hit the wall and then they continue like another quarter mile in about two seconds. But uh, it is amazing. But anyway, so we got there and uh, they were selling standing room tickets. I get it. People want to stand up, you know, get in there to watch the fucking thing. So there's the level we're sitting, and then there's this giant, like, you know, uh, walkway, and then there's the next section, all right? And, And so basically the people should have stood in that middle section where you're walking to either make a left to go to the higher seats or make a right to go down where we were at. And where we were at, there were two sections, and there was like a, uh, in a little skinny hallway so these fucking assholes were walking down and they were standing up there right and uh you know all they had was these volunteer teenage kids you know sitting there chewing gum not stopping them so it got to the point after a couple of races and who's kidding who a couple of fucking mint juleps that people start going what the fuck but everybody's there is polite you know what i mean still kentucky how y'all doing? I fucking hate your guts, but I'm going to smile on your face. You know what I'm saying? Afterwards, you know, I'll fucking, I'll stick a fucking, some sort of farming tool in the back of your goddamn neck. But right now I'm going to, how y'all doing? Oh, that's great. Where you from? Where y'all from? No, I didn't get that experience in Kentucky. They were cool as shit, but whatever. So finally, we end up saying something, you know, Lawhead's dad fucking taps this guy in the shoulder and he's like, excuse me, sir. You know, we paid to sit here. You guys are standing up here. I don't know what happened. All I know is it started getting heated. And I saw where Jay, Jay got his fire from. So now, you know, Lawhead and Verzi aren't there. So I got to step in. Granted, this is the funny thing. I got to step in dressed like fucking Colonel Sanders, right? Or at the very least that I play banjo in a Dixieland band. I got on a fucking bow tie with the goddamn, you know, my dad owned a plantation hat. And I come in, you know. I didn't even come in. I never even got out of my seat. I just started jawing at this guy. I, I yelled, I go, buddy, I paid to sit in this seat and I'm staring at the back of your head. So he looks over me, he goes, what'd you say? I said, I paid to sit in this seat and I'm staring at the back of the head, your head. And he goes, oh yeah, how do you like the view? I go, I don't like it. That's why we're having this conversation, right? And very quickly, I realized that he wasn't going to throw a punch. He didn't throw a punch in the dirt and I'm not going to throw a punch, right? I'm not going to, I haven't thrown a fucking punch since like a street hockey game in like fucking seventh grade, right? So we're jawing back and forth, right? And he's fucking, you know, his broad saying something. I don't listen to her. I can't hear that voice. It's too fucking high up in the strands. Hey, 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 shut up, lady. So I said, hey. And he goes, what are you getting involved, fucker? Because you're yelling at a 77-year-old, I said 80-year-old man. I rounded up. I go, you're yelling at an 80-year-old man. He goes, oh, I wasn't yelling at an 80-year-old man. I go, really, that wasn't you? That looked like you two seconds ago doing that. You know, whatever. And then the fucking woman, you know, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, that 80 year old man verbally attacked him. Every fucking douche, you know, verbally attacked him. He's fucking 80. What's he going to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> Although you got to watch out for an 80 year old, you know, at the very least maybe fought in Korea. He, you know, hand to hand combat. You don't know what flashback could come back. Next thing you know, all right, he's using his fucking racing form as a bayonet. You could have some problems. So, of course, me, you know, everybody's dressed all dapper and everything. Then I feel like a fucking asshole afterwards. Everything settled down. And this, this guy who, who wasn't involved in the fight but was also standing up, 
with his fucking girlfriend and he had his hand not on her ass like under it and she kept moving it like can you stop like tapping the back of my pussy with the middle of your finger please um he actually looks over at me and he goes hey bill big fan <laughs> I feel like such an asshole. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm not just this fucking asshole anymore yelling at a game. They're like, oh, yeah, Bill Burr was a fucking asshole. Ah, it's fucking hilarious. So then I felt all self-conscious, like, eh, is that going to end up on YouTube? And not that I gave a shit about what I said. It was that I was dressed like a fucking, you know, like I had a chicken franchise. That's the thing I was worried about. So anyways... So that happens. But uh, so basically we kind of did that and we kind of scared a lot of people away. And uh, then I was kind of, you know, afterwards sobering up, you know, because I was like, you know, I got to stay sober because I got to watch game seven of uh, the Clippers and the Spurs. And then I got to watch the Pac- Manny Pacquiao fight, right? Uh, Mayweather Pacquiao fight, right? <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm starting to sober up and I just started thinking like, ah, oh, man, you know. I shouldn't have fucking done that. We both should have handled that situation better. There should have been some excuse me's if you don't mind and shit like that. And I was thinking about it. And then somebody finally was just talking to me about the Derby. Uh, This lady, and she goes, ah, who's kidding who? This is just a really well-dressed shit show. And I laughed because I was kind of sitting there fighting the feeling that as fancy as this was, as legendary as all this is, this event, at the end of the day, you just kind of go into the track. You know what I mean? This is really, we're just betting on the dogs, whatever. They're horses, you know? But anyways, um, so whatever. We start betting races, and of course I'm losing. Of course I'm losing. The fucking track has been open for over 140 fucking years. 141 runnings of that race, okay? You don't stay open by fucking paying out people. So, you know, I'm losing, and I'm losing, and uh, I finally just say, ah, fuck it. I'll just bet on the derby race. Oh, a lot of people don't know this. The races start at 1030. And they run them on the dirt track, and there's a grass track, a little short track. Um, they just, you know, they'll run like six horses. And uh, if you find it's funny is if you're on the other side of the track, you can't even see the goddamn race. You just got to watch it on TV, which once again, you're sitting there fucking getting sunburned, right? Like you came to this country in a raft 20 minutes ago, hoping to get your fucking Truman rights. Tony Montana reference. Um so anyways, well, you know, I just let all those ones go and um, I went and I bet the derby race and uh, I, I just picked three favorites, just trying to win some money, picked three favorites, bet them across the board. Two of them came in um, and I think I, what did I do? I think I lost like 25 bucks on the day and I was down like 50 or 60 bucks and in the end I won like 30 something. Yeah, something like that. But whatever. It was a fucking awesome time. I would definitely do it again. I would say if you go to the Derby race, uh, that's actually that's a great thing to bring your fucking lady to because it's a sporting event. You get to gamble, right? You dress up. She dresses up. They like dressing up, right? They look. They like the fucking horses, right? Who doesn't like animals? You know who doesn't like animals? Fucking animals. Animals don't like animals, right? They don't. They're self-loathing. How much, you know, they're always talking about, you know, how what fucking animals that human beings act like. What about the animals? The reference, you know? You know what goes on in those woods, in those jungles? You know what goes on? Murder. Every fucking day. Every goddamn day. They're out there fucking murdering people. That's how they get their food. You know, they murder one another. I mean, am I actually presenting the southern argument... Basically uh, supporting hunting. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. If we didn't shoot them, they'd just fucking eat each other. So what's the point? I'm hungry too, motherfucker. What am I supposed to do? Eat you? Am I supposed to eat you? Um, oh, one of the great heckles I ever got. I owe somebody an apology in Evansville, Indiana. Um, the fun thing about when people text during your show is like, You know, I always have the the crowd. Like, I can see the first few rows or whatever, but then it just kind of goes black. So if somebody starts texting, their whole face lights up when they're up there so you can see it. So I always freak people out. I'll be in the middle of my act, and I'll just see this light like 40 rows up, and I'll just point right at them, and I go, texting! You know? And I do this little rift about the person dying of thumb cancer because they can't put their phone down, right? So, uh... So whatever, I'm in the middle of my show in Evansville. I'm having a great fucking time. It's the last night of the tour. Uh, you know, 
we're going to go fuck. Oh, I still haven't explained why I'm in Columbus, Indiana. Um, I'll explain that a little bit, right? So I'm in the, get, winding it down, getting towards the end of my act. And this person's, I see this person's face light up, 40 fucking rows up. And I go, texting. And I start doing my little riff about thumb cancer. And um, the guy ends up going, <laughs> he yells out after I finished it. My whole long soliloquy about this person texting, right? And he goes, uh, he just yells out, I was taking your picture, you fucking dick. <laughs> Oh my god. Taking your picture, you fucking dick. And uh I forget what I said to him, but I was wrong. It's like, all right, you just and I go, Well, you're not supposed to. I'm gonna hang out after the show, you can do it then. I kinda wear my way out of it instead of being like, Oh, you know what, sir? I was wrong. I thought you were texting, you were actually taking my picture, meaning you obviously were having a good time with the show. I was in the wrong. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. Instead, I just said, well, uh, you're not supposed to. And that was like two two days ago. And I just keep thinking of that. That's been making me laugh for two days. You know, like when somebody just says something that just strikes you as funny, like for two days, it just keeps popping in your head. You know what I mean? And people think you're weird because you just burst out laughing out of nowhere. I've been doing that for two days. I just went over to a Waffle House. I'm on the road. Cut me some slack, right? I fucking go over there. I'm in the middle. I'm up sitting at the counter. You know, it's like elbow to elbow because it's a Sunday here when I'm recording this. Um, and I'm sitting next to this fucking guy. And out of nowhere, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I think I already ordered my stupid dinner, my breakfast. And I just heard this guy's voice. Taking your picture, you fucking dick. I just bursted out laughing and I kind of weirded out the guy next to me. Like, why is this guy laughing? Is he laughing at me? Is there a fucking problem here or what? Um, so I apologize to that guy. You were right. I was wrong. And then also uh, I want to thank you for probably, you know, I don't think you're sitting around still laughing at my act. Uh, you've making me laugh for 48 hours. I'm sure you weren't laughing at my act after I trashed you for texting. You took, to, you took it really personally. Taking your picture, you fucking dick. Um, that was great. Don't do that in Alabama. Don't say that in Alabama. I'm taking your picture, you fucking dick. And then my other favorite one was uh, was in Mobile. I was doing some bit about something dumb that I did. I said, can you believe that? Why the fuck would I do that? And I hear this guy go, fucking dumbass. <laughs> Needless to say, old Freckles had a great time. Um, I didn't even talk about Louisville, Kentucky, man. We had, oh, shit. I'm so glad I didn't forget. Oh, let me let me do the Columbus thing. Fucking ADD kicking in here. Um, how I ended up in Columbus, Indiana is basically because all the hotels anywhere near Louisville are sold out. Um, and we laid, I mean, I got the tickets and I waited till last second to get a fucking room. So we had like a 75-mile round-trip drive. And, uh, you know, we all kicked in for a car service. You know, it wasn't that bad at the end of the day. And uh, it was great. Door-to-door -door service so we could get all liquid. Um, so anyways, uh, one of the coolest things ever, okay? So we're going to Lexington, Kentucky. And as I, I mentioned slash threatened that I was possibly considering when I was in Lexington, Kentucky, wearing my Kentucky Derby outfit on stage. And uh, which was basically a seersucker suit with uh, a pink and baby blue bow tie with silly Canadians fan fucking socks to match. I, I, got, I owe the apology to the Habs fan, too. I like silly socks. Who knew? A Bruins fan. I got to admit, silly socks are fun. And you know who likes them? The fucking ladies. Um, oh, look at those. Those are cute. Had I known back when I was a single man, I'll tell you right now, if you're in a dry spell right now and you're not fucking getting pussy, I'm telling you, I'm sorry to be graphic, ladies. Fucking go get yourself some silly socks and just stick your foot on something that's a little higher than your other foot and you'll show it off and they'll come walking up to you. They'll strike it up. Women cannot resist a fashion statement. I'm telling you, there's something about it. Not all of them, but I'm telling you, there's something about it. Now I understand those Frenchies and why they have those fucking menage a trois. It's not because they're, they're more schooled in the language of love. It's those fucking socks, which is smart, right? 
you get them looking down at your ankles because you don't have deodorant in your fucking armpits. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Bill. What is wrong with you? Oh, fuck you. You fill an hour every fucking week. Um, anyways. Oh, okay. I'll tell you the Lexington uh, story uh, right after these messages here. And I don't have my advertising yet, so I'm going to have to drop these in. So if it sounds different, that's why. So let's take a moment right now. To listen to Bill Burr in the future struggle his way through the copy of some advertising for this week. Oh, it's Sherry's Berries, everybody. Swizzlers. Speak louder than words. Mother's Day is this weekend. It is officially last minute, motherfuckers. Not sure how to put your thanks into words this Mother's Day? Mother's Day, <laughs> Swizzler speaks louder than words. Freshly drip dips berries with decorative swizzles. This Mother's Day, you know what to say in your heart. Here is how to say it out loud. Show your mom you love her with a gift from Sherry's Berries. For my listeners only, Sherry's Berries is offering giant freshly dipped strawberries Starting at nineteen ninety nine, over forty percent savings. And for my listeners, you can double the berries for just ten dollars more. But you have to use my code B U R R. Berries dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness, topped with chocolate chips, nuts, and decorative swizzle. Choose from berries, cake, truffles, brownie pops, oh Jesus, pretzels, and more. You just need my code, Burr, when you order giant, fresh, juicy, delicious. Tell a personal story. I don't have one. Here's the only way to get this amazing deal. Freshly dipped strawberries starting in $19.99, over a 40% saving. This is this offer is for my listeners only when you enter my code, Burr, B-U-R-R. Visit Berries. B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the microphone on the top right-hand corner and type in Burr. B-U-R-R. Go to berries dot com. Click on the microphone and enter my code Burr. Um, me undies, me undies. No more sweaty balls. But boop, boop, boop. Me undies, me undies. Um, it's good if you're gonna sprawl. Spread your fucking sweaty legs. Put on this underwear. And it dries out your balls. I don't know what you want from me. It's fucking me undies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 90%. That's the fucking percent of your life. Sorry, guys. I just got off a plane and I had a couple of fucking cocktails. 90%. That's the percent of your life that you're in your underwear. And your underwear gets old fast. You know that feeling of putting on old, saggy underwear. You need to know that feeling of great fitting underwear that is two times softer than co- cotton. You need to know about me undies, me undies, no more sweaty balls or clams, even if you're a fucking transsexual and you got all the goods, none of it will be sweaty. Yeah, there you go, Bruce Jenner. Put this shit on you, motherfucker. Me undies. <laughs> it's the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. And it's insane how good they make your balls, your dick, and possibly your JJ feel. They make you feel, they feel great. They fit perfectly, they don't ride up on you. And they literally pull moisture, gross, um, away from your skin so you stay, stay cool. I have mine on right now and I'm floating. Half of that has to do with the fucking cocktails. Got bumped up to first class there. Uh, they have cool stuff. <laughs> Cool styles. Cool styles, me and for both men and women. And they all look great. Check out the photos yourself, MeUndies.com. This quality would typically retail for two times MeUndies price, according to MeUndies. No retail mini- middleman means more savings for you. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll make it easy. Go to MeUndies.com slash burr. And get 20% off your first order and free shipping. Save even more when you buy a pack of them. They guarantee you're going to be happy with them or your first pair is free. 
All right, last one in this little chunk here. All right, Dollar Shave Club, everybody. You have heard me talking about DollarShaveClub.com, the company that delivers amazing razors for a few bucks. I know, a razor that costs a few bucks delivering a great shave seems too good to be true, right? But you really have to try the razors. The DollarShaveClub.com razors give me the most amazing shape I've had in years for the price. Don't pay triple the price when you get a fan when you can get a, a fantastic shave. Oh, I get the hiccups delivered for just a couple of dollars. Let me tell you something. You'd have to be a fucking idiot to keep overpaying. I'm a semi known person, and I'm constantly getting my picture taken by some fucking animal outside of a bar. And I'm on TV shows in high definition. I can't be seen with nicks and cuts all over my face. I have to shave with a high-quality razor. Don't be fooled by the price. These razors are legit. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Come on now. And you'll never go back. Plus, they also got Dr. Cobby's Easy Shave Butter. Fucking butter. It's phenomenal. If you're still using old-fashioned shave foam, you're a fucking loser. And I feel bad for you. Drive dollarshaveclub.com slash burr, B-U-R-R, to get started today to get started. You wish you had started sooner. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr, dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Oh, yeah. How do I shut this off? Hey, and I'm back. I'm back, and it's fucking yesterday. Or maybe earlier today, depending on whenever I get the fucking advertising. Um, Anyways, let's get back to... uh, Oh, this is a good way for me to not to fucking get off track here, is to not read advertising, just plow through this shit. Um, So I'll actually come back out of the advertising and give you the Lexington story. So here you go. So I'm sitting there, I'm getting ready for the show, and I'm ironing my regular shirt and everything. And I'm thinking, ah, I should wear the Kentucky Derby outfit. Then I'm thinking, oh, what if they don't like it? And then I'm standing there, I look stupid. And then I was just like, yeah, don't be a pussy. Put the fucking thing on. So I put the whole thing on, right? And I'm standing backstage and I'm waiting to go on um, after Verzi and Lawhead killed it. Lawhead's hosting, so he's about ready to bring me up. And for the first time since I can remember, I was actually a little nervous just walking out to do a regular show, you know? Um, you know, if it's fucking special or something like that, you always get the butterflies. Um, and I was actually nervous. So he introduced, please welcome Bill Burr. So I come walking out and everybody's clapping. And as they're clapping, they're taking in what the fuck I'm wearing, right? And uh, they went fucking nuts. They all stood up. It was one. I got to tell you, I got to thank people. Like, that is, that's the coolest round of applause I ever got in my life. I've never heard a crowd cheer like that. It was a different thing. It wasn't that was funny or I relate to that. That was, uh, I can't explain it. Like, it was, it was, it made the fucking tour. Really made the tour. And then it was funny. Now I'm standing there. I got this outfit on and then it dies down and I go into my act and then it just became even funnier. Like, oh, he's just going to do his act dressed like <laughs> like he's uh, competing with Popeye's chicken here. And um, I toughed it out for a good 10 minutes before I finally had to take the hat off. I'm like, you guys, I got to tell you, this, this seemed like a great idea 90 seconds ago, but this fucking thing is hot as hell under these lights. So I ended up taking off the hat. But uh, anyways, we, um, we ended up hanging out in um, Lexington, Kentucky, and it was... Uh, it was uh, just ridiculously polite people. We were right on the cam- campus of the uh, Kentucky Wildcats. And, um, I mean, it wasn't just me. Even uh, Lawhead and Verzi were both just really blown away at how great the people were in Kentucky. You know, um, just really, really just nice, polite, smart people. We were right there on the fucking campus or whatever. What are you saying? We weren't smart and intelligent, you fucking dick. In Evansville, I'm just saying, you know, it was a different vibe. Each one had a different vibe. Like, I liked Evansville, and everyone was shitting on Evansville, saying what a shithole it was. And uh, I don't know. I just have a different perspective living in a state that is running out of water, you know, that is overly populated, living in a city that's actually a desert, but for some reason doesn't look like it because we steal the water. 
and everybody freaking the fuck out like Captain Kirk there, actually having the balls to say that Seattle has too much water. It's like, oh, really? Oh, did nature fuck that up? Did God put the water in the wrong place, Shatty? Um, <laughs> Shatty. <laughs> um, Bill Shatty. Oh, Billy Shat. Um, it's like, no, we, we've been stealing the water. At some point, the check was going to hit the table, right? It's time to pay up. Who knows what's going to happen? Do you realize I just fucking put in one of the great bathrooms of all time in Los Angeles, and it might not have a drop coming out of the spigot? Whose fault is that? I knew it was a desert, you know? You got to know when to hold them. Know when not to build a bathroom, especially when you live in a desert that steals some water. Don't act like a victim, even though you're a captain of a spaceship. That was a long fucking time ago, and that spaceship wasn't real. Um, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, um, so, so we go to the derby. The derby ends. Now we're driving back, you know. Everybody's starting to nod off or whatever. And uh, we fucking get back here to Columbia, Indiana. And we're all excited because we're going to go watch the uh, Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. And we're going to watch Game 7 and then we're going to watch Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. Oh, by the way, I was wrong about the uh, my Red Wings pick. Congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning for closing out that series. And then I also said that the Spurs... We're going to beat uh, the Clippers. I, I said the Spurs, once the Clippers lost game two, I was like, that fucking series is over. It's the Clippers. They don't have it in them. The Spurs know how to win. It's the first round. They're going to fucking get past them. Shows you what the fuck I know. Once again, shows you what the fuck I know. Which also begs the question, why the fuck are you still listening to this? Um, we end up going into uh, the Buffalo Wild Wings up the street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Buffalo Wild Wings, and uh, turns out they don't have the fight. We're like, what do you mean you don't have the fight? It's the biggest fucking fight of the last 10 goddamn years in boxing. How do you not have the fight? Mr. Wild Wings, can I call you Buffalo? Hey, Buffy, why don't you have the fucking fight, right? Well, we walk in there, and within two seconds, we realize why they don't have the fight. Because it's an absolute shit show. We walked into that fucking place, the Buffalo Wild Wings, um, and they had Game 7 up on the big screen. They had two big screens. So up on the big screen, they have Game 7 of the Spurs and the Clippers, and next to it, they have another big screen. And on that, they have some replay of a golf tournament. And for whatever fucking reason, when we walked in, the volume was up on the golf tournament to, like, like Spinal Tap 11. I've never heard golf commentary that loud in my life. And meanwhile, the Spurs, it was already the third quarter. It was just the start, uh, coming, out of the, uh, coming out of the half. It was like 54, 52, something crazy like that. So I guess it was, you know, you know quarter in, mid, mid third quarter, right? And we're sitting there. Lawhead's immediately be beside himself. Lawhead used to manage a fucking restaurant. So we always walk in and we get him going. We go, Jay, could you manage this place? Verzi always does this. Hey, Jay, could you manage this place? And he goes, oh, you kidding me? Okay, right now, I'll tell you right now, she'd be fired. And he just starts firing half the staff. It's just this fucking running joke. And we asked him about this place. He said, well, how would you manage this place? He said, I'd board it up and shut it down. <laughs> Call the fucking regional manager and say, we got to start over again. So we say to the waitress, uh, can we put the... Uh, game seven basketball fan on or are these you guys really into golf here and she kind of laughs saying, yeah i don't know why the volume's up on that either so they switch it over to the game <clears throat> and we were watching the game still beside ourselves that a buffalo wild wings for as much as you watch their commercials like this is the place to go to watch the game everybody with their tall fucking slender hoary looking glasses drinking the blue moon with the orange in it right having the best fucking time ever watching the game telling little petty lies to their friends and their wives and all this shit because it's so great. Isn't that also the one where you get to hit pause so you can just make this amazing experience continue even longer? I'll tell you right now, man, our experience at the Buffalo Wild Wings, Applebee's could talk shit to Buffalo Wild Wings. And you know when you go to an Applebee's to watch a game, you're watching that on a square kitchen TV, all right, that's stuck up next to some fake brick, you know, as they bring you over one of those hot skillets. Of some shit that they think is fancy. All right? Those poor people. Nobody at Applebee's has, has, has progressed beyond the seventh grade. And that's a fact. That's actually one of the requirements to manage an Applebee's. 
okay? Your grades have to take a major dip in the seventh grade. Lost all hope by the 10th grade, all right? Anyways, let's plow ahead here. So anyway, so I'm sitting there going like, wow, it's really fucked up that the wild wings of buffalo... Um, why is Domex's chicken wild? Um, <laughs> so anyways, I actually went to look up, uh, you know, I don't know. I was just reading on the, uh, the Pacquiao fight. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What the fuck am I talking about? So the fucking Clippers ended up beating the Spurs in one of the great games I've seen in basketball in a while and great series. God knows the only reason why I watched it because I was hanging out with Verzi and Lawhead. I've missed all the hockey, as you can tell. I know Tampa Bay's up uh, one game to none on the Habs. I know the Rangers are up 2 nothing on the Capitals. I think the Ducks won their first game, and I don't know what's going on with Chicago. Uh, oh, Bill, you could have looked it up before the podcast. Hey, you know what you could do? You could go fuck yourself. You could do it too. Maybe if I fuck this up, it makes you feel good because you get to correct me on Twitter. Um, anyway, so I, um, I ended up, we came back. I crash and Verzi texts me like two hours later and says, I guess the uh, the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight was a shit show. It was boring as shit and blah, 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 what people were basically saying. And um, so I was kind of looking it up today to see what the deal was. And, you know, basically boxing purists or at this point people who actually watch boxing were saying that it was a great fight and that Mayweather once again put on, put on an absolute clinic. And if you actually knew your ass from a fucking hole in the ground when it came to boxing – you would have actually been able to see that and you wouldn't have been piss moaning and complaining that it was boring, you know, which I understand because I know when I watch UFC, which I don't know a lot about, but I watch it on TV and Rogan's always describing, oh, the guy's going for a Kimura, he's going for this, he's going for that. The crowd after a while starts to boo when they're laying on the ground because they think it's boring. But, you know, in defense of those fans, when you're sitting 200 rows up, you can't see what he's going for, all right? Looks like two people cuddling. Um, <laughs> but they can't quite get comfortable. They're a new couple. You know what I mean? They're trying to see how the two bodies fit together. So um, anyways, so I, I just started reading about the fight to see what happens. Um, I actually had my wife pay for the fight. I'm going to watch it tonight because um, at the very least when I watch it, it makes me want to get in shape. Um, Oh, which is a great thing to do, by the way. If you hate skipping rope, tape a fucking championship fight that goes the distance. There you go. All right? Then all you do is you press play, and when they fight, you skip rope. When they sit down, you sit down. And then you keep going. You try to see how many rounds you can go. All right? And as they get tired, you get tired, and you feel like you're actually a fighter. And then at the end of it, you realize you're just some jerk off in his in his underwear skipping rope. Right? And it hurts when it hits your toes. Um, all right. So here's how the paper – I actually looked up some shit. Here's how the pay-per-view worked out, and I own, I own another apology to the Wild Wings of Buffalo. God knows if you ever go out to Buffalo, you got to watch out for the for – the, not the domesticated chicken. It's the wild chicken, all right? Those fuckers, those fuckers will take you out, man. They'll jump right on the hood of your car, and they'll peck through your windshield, and there's nothing you can do. One of them goes for the electrical, so you fucking – you can't start your car, all right? And it's it's over. It's like one of those uh, Alfred Hitchcock movies, the chickens. Um, here's how the pay-per-view worked for, uh, for bars or anybody basically showing it at a commercial level that was going to charge for the Manny, uh, uh, the Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather fight. Bars, venues had to pay 25 times their, their fire code, fire code being the maximum amount of people that can be in the establishment, um, so it's not a fire hazard. So you had to pay 25 times basically being sold out. So basically out of the gate, if the bar charged $25 a head, they needed to sell out the bar just to break even on what they paid for the fight. This is why boxing is so fucking dumb. Okay. You got a sport that is starting to lose to the UFC or not starting to, it has been. And this is what the fuck they do when they got this great fight to maybe bring the casual fan back. You know, this is what they do. So if you had a bar that was, I actually worked out the numbers. 250 capacity, right? That's the fire code. That would cost you $6,250 to get the fight. Then if you charge 30 bucks a head, you're trying to make five a head. If you sold out, you'd make 1250. You got to spend 60 6,250 bucks to make 1,250 bucks, and that's if you fucking sold out. All right? And there's nothing stopping the guy across the street from also having the fight. 
or from people at home going, hey, why don't we have fucking, you know, five people watch it? It'll cost us 20 bucks a head. So you're competing with all of that. There's nothing exclusive about this. This isn't like, hey, you know, fucking uh, whatever, Justin Bieber. Fuck you, he sells tickets. Is performing at my venue and my venue alone tonight. No, he's across the street. He's fucking everywhere, right? So boxing, boxing basically said to these bars that we're taking all the money. Um, we're taking all the money from your customers to watch the fight, okay? And then you take the booze and the food. It was essentially like a door deal that was based on the bar taking responsibility to sell out their own venue. How dumb is that? Like, and not to mention, these two guys should have fought five to seven years ago when they were in their prime. I'm not saying they're not great fighters, not the great fighters of all fucking time. I'm just saying they should have fought like in the 2000s. It's 2015. They're finally fucking fighting. Um, I just think, I don't know, boxing is just, it's just a really poorly run fucking sport. And the fact that fighters can dodge one another for so long, I think that that's why you don't have those great fighting divisions anymore. Like when I was growing up, okay, 70s and 80s, when I was a kid and then getting into my teenage years, boxing was unbelievable, all right? And what happened with each decade was they would just, you know, the planets aligned and there'd be this ridiculous level of talent in one division. And then that was the division you wanted to watch. And then the, in, the, in, the, in the 70s, it was the heavyweight division. And then... In the 80s, it was the middleweight division. And meanwhile, there was all these other divisions that had like Alexis Arguella and Boom Boom Mancini and all these these superstars. But I think a guy like, you know, like nowadays, then it became the W. But back then it was just, what was it, the WBA? The WBF was all it was. Then it was the WBF, then the WBA and the IBF. And that would be like the NFL split into fucking three football leagues. It, you know, and each one of them had a Super Bowl champion. It fucked the whole thing up. And then all of a sudden the UFC comes along. You got everybody under the one umbrella. And even some of the other groups. Like UFC is doing exactly what the NFL and the NBA did. Like when the the ABA or the, uh, the AFL came out, the NFL just absorbed that league. The NBA absorbed the ABA. The league was, you know... That upstart league was then over, and then they had just had a monopoly. So then the best football team or the best basketball team has to play the second best one, and then that's the champion. Fucking uh, boxing hasn't been like that forever. So I think that that's why I, I think Mayweather suffers because of that, even though he wouldn't probably wouldn't be undefeated. Because who's kidding who? If Mayweather fought back in that division when Hagler, Hearns, Ray Leonard, Durand, if all of those guys had losses because they all had to fucking fight each other. And nowadays it's like, you know, fucking, you watch Mayweather and Pacquiao for fucking seven years before they finally fucking fight. I know a lot of you guys will say, Bill, you don't know shit about fighting. I admit that. Okay? But if you want to survive as a fucking league or as a division or whatever the fuck your sport is, you got to get the asshole like me to buy the fight. The casual fan who says dumb shit and the person who actually watches it sits there and rolls their eye. I know the feeling. I go to Super Bowl parties, right? I just don't understand why the fuck they're doing that because boxing is such an unbelievable sport. Um, the only thing that does bug me about it is I am a hockey fan and I hate when they talk about the fighting. How They got to get the fighting out of hockey. It's really, but you, you, really, you got to get the fighting out of hockey, but, but you don't have to get the fighting out of boxing. You know what I mean? That's all they do is punch each other in the fucking head to the point that they end up with Parkinson's disease. Fucking hockey, they occasionally fight. It's, it's a little spice. It's a little fucking flavor to the game. All these fucking people who can't handle it, what well, don't fucking watch it. Ah, Jesus, Bill. You just did this sporting version of, if you don't like it, why don't you get the fuck out of the country? Taking your picture, you fucking dick. Take your picture, fucking dick. Um, <laughs> the more exaggerated, the more, the more it just keeps giving. Oh, it's the joke that just keeps giving. All right, let's do uh, let's do some uh, questions here. But um, having said all that, who the fuck wouldn't want to be in the shape of Mayweather or a fucking Pacquiao? Good lord. 
the fucking dedication alone that just that takes. Forget about the fact that you have to push down the sickening, sickening nauseating feeling that there, there is a world-class class athlete training somewhere in the universe to just beat the living shit out of you. I mean, that's just fucking unreal, you know? I mean, if you're going to get into a fight, don't you want just just to happen? Like, you know, you're just sitting there and all of a sudden you're fucking yelling at somebody at the Kentucky Derby. Then it just fucking happens. But if you have to sit there and think about it and train for it and know that somebody else is going to do it, that's just a level of balls that uh, I obviously, the old freckled wonder here, I, I, can't, I can't relate to that. Um, all right. So here we are. This is the Money Money Podcast, everybody. And uh, I do this once a week. And once a week, I got the uh, Just Checking In On You podcast on Thursday. The Tuesday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Um, that's the one I just sort of, that's a newer one. I just do like 30 minutes and then I play some classic hits from uh, from years gone by. In another world where podcasting was young, it was innocent, and it was unified. Unlike boxing. Um, if you'd like me to uh, talk about something or whatever, if you want to uh, suggest some topics, the way to do it for the Thursday one is you tweet at uh Bill at the mmpodcast.com with, with the hashtag T-A-M-M-P, all capitals, Tango, Alpha, Mike, Mike, Papa. Sorry. Um, and for the Monday Morning Podcast, if you'd like me to read your emails, your questions or whatever, um, just send it to – oh, I'm such a dope. Bill at the mmpodcast.com is the email for Mondays. I can't, I've never gotten this fucking right. All right, fuck everything that I just said. Fuck it, ditch ish. Um, all right. For the Thursday afternoon, Monday morning podcast just before Friday. All right. Hashtag T A M M P. And the Twitter account is at the M M podcast. All right. Good Lord. Now, if you want to email me for the Monday morning podcast, it's bill at the M M podcast.com. Jesus Christ, Bill. That was all written right in front of me, and I still fucked it up. Um, for the Thursday one, you can tweet articles, videos, questions. Um, I guess, you know what? You don't need to tweet at the MM podcast. You can just hashtag Jesus. Here's the third version. You can just hashtag T A M M P. Oh, fuck that. Ah, Jesus Christ. That, I mean, that was just. If anybody has a business school and you want to teach about what not to do in advertising, why don't you just play that clip? All right, under the slide, caption, shit show. All right. <clears throat> Evansville, here's a something. Greetings, Bill. I just want to take a moment to thank Bill for an incredible show in Evansville, Indiana. Thank you very much. I'm actually upset. When we rode into town, I didn't get to go to the, uh, the cross-eyed grasshopper. Family restaurant. I mean, with a fucking name like that, how do I not go in there and eat amongst those water bugs? I'm kidding. I'm sure it's a nice, clean, friendly place. Uh, I said, my face still hurts from laughing. Also, I was wondering what was, were the names of the two opening acts? Uh, they were both great. Well, that would have been Paul Verzi, V-I-R-Z-I, and Jason Lawhead. Spelt like law, break the law, and head. I'll kick you in the fucking head. Why can't it be something nice? Okay, I will fix the cowlick on top of your head gently as I stare at your eyes. Um, <laughs> stare at your eyes? Look romantically. Oh, fuck, Bill. Forget it. All right, Thursday podcast. Um, hey, Bill, on the old clips, uh, you talked about an urban legend. Oh, yeah, I was talking about all those urban legends about, you remember Pop Rocks? Dude. There was a kid, and he, he ate a whole bottle. He sucked down a whole package of Pop Rocks, and his fucking stomach exploded. And there was always the one about, dude, there was a kid who he put, in, he put an M80, which is a, an eighth of a stick of dynamite, I believe. We always thought it was a quarter stick. I think it's an eighth. Stuck it in the back of some kid's pocket, lit it, and uh, blew half the kid's ass off. So this guy says, um, well, in the mid-'80s, my brother, my stepbrother did just that. He had to gets skin grafted from his thigh to his ass. It's no urban legend from New Jersey. Oh, maybe that's where it started. They always say there's a little bit of truth in all of that shit. Is that what they say? That is what they say. Two, Billy, 
Holy shit, the Thursday podcast is the best thing you could have done. You are a genius. I'm not a genius. Andrew came up with it. Uh, the old clips are hilarious. I love dropping in on the middle of an old school podcast, catching you in a random mood. Yeah, that is the thing, because my vibe on this Thursday, then it connects with whatever the fuck I was talking about on some Monday in like 2009 or 10 or something. So I guess that would be a weird little mashup, as the kids say. Um this person said, I listen to a lot of podcasts over time. Some of them change. The hosts get egos and the vibe is different. I love how you're 10 times bigger than you were when you, oh, look at this whole fucking ball rubbing thing here. Did I write this? I'm 10 times bigger than I was, everybody, when I started the podcast, but I still act the same. All freckles is down to her. Well, when you're a balding, redheaded male, you really don't have the opportunity to take your shirt off and VIP, do you? Huh? Spin it around your head. I swear to God, if I had pigment, I would be a much... Oh, my God. I, the ego I would fucking have. Are you kidding me? If I had pigment, a full head of hair, you guys wouldn't even know me. Um, the day that they actually come up with a pill, because I, I would never do that fucking, you know, taking hair from the back of your fucking head, putting on... I would never do that. I'm not, I'm not fucking doing that. Numbing up my head. It's just like, all right, dude. Bill, why don't you just admit that it's over? All right, fucking buzz it down, grow some sort of facial hair, you know, or just shave your face and let people look like a, just make them look at a, a, a rapidly approaching 50-year-old adult baby. <laughs> how mad. Don't do this, by the way, because you'll get in trouble. But how fucking funny and how mad would the person get if you walked up to a fucking guy who had his head clean shaved and his face, he didn't have any facial hair, all right? And he's in his 40s or whatever. You just walked up to him. He's sitting in a bar, minding his own business. And you walked up and underneath his chin, you went, a gooji, gooji, goo. A gooji, abu, abu. Like, how far could you get away before that person? I think I would, well, no, somebody touching you would make you mad. Other than that, I mean, I think I'd laugh. Um, but don't do that, everybody. Okay, the world is a, is is a bad enough place. You really don't need, you know, you know. Do you really need a bar fight? Think about that, people. At what point in your in your life do you sit there and be like, you know, what would be a good asset to my life right now, both spiritually, personally, and legally? Uh, a nice knockdown, drag out bar fight. Although that would be funny though if that happened, and then you guys actually decided to work it out on like Judge Judy. You know, and she comes out there all fucking extra angry for the fucking, uh, you know, for the TV cameras. And you went out there and, the, you know, the bald guy's got to go, uh, you know, it's, it's minding my own business. And this mate come up and he, he put his finger. Charlie bit my finger and it hurt. He put it on under my cheek and under my chin. And what did he say at that time? Oh, he said, a coochie, coochie, coo. Right, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know why I had to be English. Or oh, whatever the fuck I was just trying to do. Right, there's no robbery. I gotta get back to fucking Peaky Blinders when I get back. Um, I'm two episodes in, and I'm gonna watch every fucking episode I can before I go to, to all my shows in Boston there. Um, all right. What else was there? Uh, thanks for the laugh, man. My days go by much quicker. No worries, everybody. Look at that. The Thursday afternoon... Just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, the just checking in on your podcast to make it fucking quicker is really, look at, people are liking it. Check it out if you can. Um, oh, shit. All right. I got to read another advertising here before I get into the rest of these. Uh, once again, this is Bill Burr in the future, desperately trying to read out loud. Oh, Jesus, we're back in the past there. Actually, when you're listening to all of this, it's all in the past, isn't it? I don't know. All right. Booing at the draft from a lady. Hey, Bill, my mother-in-law is a huge sports fan, and she insisted on watching the draft. I have never seen the draft before, and I was really shocked at the rude behavior of the spectators. Well, you've obviously never gone to a sporting event. Going to a sporting event is watching a bunch of people that probably can't catch a ball, or maybe they could, but now... They're just old and out of shape, just, you know, just trashing people that can do what they, they could never do. That's what it is. 
Um, anyways, is that how it normally goes down, or is it because it was held in Chicago? As a Wisconsinite, I would have thought I was a Wisconsiner, a Wisconsinite um, that lives in a tourist destination for those damn FIBs. Fucking idiot bastards. Oh, fucking Illinois bastards. Oh, I came close. Uh, as we call them in Door, Con- Door County. I instantly blame Chicago for all the ass hattery. Are my instincts correct or is it always like that? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, no, your instincts are not correct. And as far as how Wisconsinites view people from Chicago, you know, that's just standard behavior. That's standard human behavior. You don't like your neighbor. You don't like your neighbor. This town is rivals with the town next to it. This state doesn't like the state next to it. This country doesn't like the country next to it. You you just keep making it bigger and bigger. This continent doesn't like this continent. You can go right up. Just basically, familiarity breeds contempt. And it takes an unbelievable level of maturity for you to be sitting up there in cheese land to look down at Mustache City and see the good in it. You know? Especially when they're coming up there to vacation in in your area. You're not going to like it. When I lived in New York City, I fucking hated walking through Times Square. Bunch of fucking families with their kids going to the fucking M&M store. You know, they actually made you wish that it was still peep shows, which was disgusting. It was fucking gross. Times Square back in the day was gross. And now they've gone the other way, which just, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, big people in jean shorts plodding through traffic, not knowing where they're going. And uh, there's nothing like a giant, a giant group of people likes to do more than to just stop and stand in the middle of the sidewalk looking around, waiting for someone to make a fucking decision. You know? A bunch of followers. All right? Walking into the Hershey Kiss store. You know? Or buying some fucking New York t-shirt that has fucking... You know, you buy the New York T-shirt with a picture of John Lennon on it wearing the New York T-shirt. You want to do that shit? Yeah, you fucking hate that stuff. So, no, I don't think it has to do with that. I mean, obviously, you know, Philly's known for booing. Uh, New York City's known for booing. Boston's known for do. you know. It's a, uh, you know, it's a shit. And people also fly in for the draft, if you can believe that. They fly in for the draft. <laughs> I will never understand that. I already did a bit about it on my last special, but I I will never understand that. It's like going down to the DMV when you don't have to. Someone's going to take the test for you. All you got to do is just see how they did the next day. As you're eating a fucking English muffin, there's no fucking reason to go down there. Um, I haven't even looked. I haven't even stopped to even look to see, you know, who my team took. Um... And I don't give a sh- I mean, I care. I want them to do well. But, like, I'll wait to the football season to see how they do. But I guess those are the people that get into it a lot more. You know, the ones that want to – those are the people that actually know the names of, like, the GMs and the higher-ups. And, like, I, I just don't have fucking time to get into it to that level. You know what I mean? I, I have too many other things that waste my time. Um, so, no, I wouldn't blame it on Chicago. I like Chicago. I love Wisconsin. I think you guys are all great. Standing from the outside, I don't know what your fucking problem is. The same way I look at the Middle East, what is the fucking problem over there? Why don't you all guys, if everybody just became atheist in the Middle East, you know, ah, they'd find something else. I don't like his shoes. <laughs> Let's blow him up. Um, game show. Uh, Bill, if you could be on any game show from any time period. Oh, what a great question. What would it be? I'm a huge. I'm, back in the day, I was a big game show fan. When I was growing up during the summer, we didn't have a pool, right? We lived on a busy street. We used to watch The Prices Right every day. Is that the one? Or the thinking music on the match games? Boom, 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 boom. The fucking wah wah pedal was big in the 70s. All right, um, let's see. I picture you on The Price is Right. Good call. God knows you're not cut out for Jeopardy. Fuck you. Or Wheel of Fortune. Kidding, you're a smart bastard. No, I'm not. Oh, no, Wheel of Fortune, dude, you can have everything but the vowels, and I still can't get it. Um, 
I'm really bad at that. Like you see, you see, I'm not good at reading out loud. I'm not good at reading in general. Everything gets all jumbled up. You know, my eyes travel faster than my brain can process it. It's an absolute shit show. Uh, he goes, I see you teaching old ladies how to put and demonstrating what? How to putt and demonstrating the wheel going around. Oh, yeah, I thought you meant as a contestant. You're talking about hosting. All right, or uh, demonstrating the wheel going around one full rotation and not to mention the kisses on the cheek from all the fucking ladies. And instead of Barker's beauties, it'd be Burr's beauties. Your thoughts. All right, if I could host any show. Um, I kind of like the family feud, but there's two, you got to talk to too many people. I'd rather just deal with the head of both families like a mob thing. Like, let's have a little fucking sit down. All right. You know, you seem like a reasonable person, but, you know, that shit show behind you, I really don't want to get involved in. So why don't you ask them what the fuck they think, and then you say it. How about that? All right? So I, I would not last long on that. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Um, I could actually, I wouldn't mind hosting that one. The sound of the wheel is annoying to me. And I don't like when they fucking lose a turn. They go, beep. That would get to me after a while because I would think like that would be the, the soundtrack to my career at that point. <laughs> Although Vanna White's still there, still looking on. You know, she threw me a glance with those beautiful fucking eyes. I, that could be a fun one. Uh, Price is Right. I mean, that's the iconic one. I mean, that's the fucking Patriots. That's the Yankees. And much as I hate to say, the Canadians are game shows. Right? It is. Fucking is. Actually, to be fair, it's the Green Bay Packers. Because they've won the most NFL titles and, su and Super Bowls combined. I would have to say that. So, uh, Price is Right. I, you know what I like about the Price is Right is you're not confined to just one game. You know what I mean? Like, Wheel of Fortune is the one game, the spin in the wheel, spin in the wheel, spin in the wheel. Fucking Family Feud, I asked you, uh, name a sound of a fart. And you said, <laughs> survey set. You know, whatever. I think mean, you're just doing the same thing fucking over and over again, right? But the price is right. There's all those different games. All the different games. And then, you know, you got a halftime, like a sporting event. I think you nailed it, dude. Remember Card Sharks? All of it higher. All of it lower. It's fucking stupid. It's really hard. You know, if you can come up with a good game show, one of the most brilliant ones ever was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Well, that's such a fucking simple idea. I can't believe I didn't fucking think to do that. Sure as hell wouldn't be hosting this podcast right now. I'd be drinking myself to death somewhere on a fucking, I don't know what, not an island. I'd be getting, I'd die a sunstroke. I don't know where the fuck I'd be, but I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Who wants to be a millionaire? Hey, who doesn't? I mean, right there, the fucking show sells itself. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up with a game show for like the porno network called Who Wants a Blowjob? <laughs> I do, right? There you go. There's your show. Then you just ask, like, fucking questions about, uh, you know, whatever, sex. Rim job. Is that your final answer? Final answer, rim job. Do, 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 do. You are correct. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Woman takes man's leg. Okay. Hey, Bill. I'm, I am 19 years old. Oh, by the way, I'm really happy that a fucking woman finally wrote in here. Hey, Bill, I am 19 years old, just graduating high school, and not going and going to enlist in the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, just a little about me in parentheses. Uh, I have been listening to your podcast for about a year now, and I find you hilarious. Anyways, I came across this video, and apparently this lady steal this, steals this guy's leg when he goes to sleep and has been holding it for ransom because this guy cheated on her. I just wanted to get your take on this since you're the best on discussing the ladies. Thanks for all the laughs and go fuck yourself. So wait a minute. This guy's got a fake leg? Obviously. No, Bill. He's got a real one and she sawed it off and fucking, I don't know. What do they do? Then they stick your stump in a fire. That's how they used to do it in the, uh, the cowboy movies to cauterize or whatever that fucking word is. Clarify your fucking arteries. I don't know. Stop the bleeding. Does that even work or is that just some Hollywood shit? I have no fucking idea. I don't pretend to be a doctor or even look like one. Um, what do I think about that? Well, he fucked around. Hell hath no fury. 
Well, how long has she had the leg? You know what I would do? I'd just buy another one. I'd light up my car. I'd buy another one and I would fucking, you know, walk awkwardly over to her house and I would just be like, really? You know? What do I think about that? I think uh, she should give it back. I understand why she fucking did it, but um, that's that bullshit that women can get away with, where they can get away with destruction of property and that type of shit. Like, you know, they can throw all your shit out the fucking window, light it on fire and do all this type of crap. And the cops show up just laughing. You know, (laughs) I've been there. I fucked around on my girl. (laughs) I got a dick too, buddy. This is what happens every once in a while. They light their shit on fire. Oh, she's like a fucking alley cat and a fucking nigger. Um, what do I think about it? I think it's fucking hilarious. He obviously, uh, you know, he fucked around. What are you going to do? What are you getting mad about that? You got I would. I would think that if I had a fake leg and I was fucking around, that uh, I would be wearing that thing to bed. You know what I mean? Or at least I'd have a backup leg. I think in general, wouldn't you have a backup leg? I mean, even people who can't see got a backup pair of glasses, right? She'd have another leg. You know what? You have a fucking you know you know how many cell phone charges I have. I fucking lose those things all the time. And I know what people with no with only one leg are thinking, dude. You have any idea how expensive they are? No, I got both my legs. But I can tell you this: I cut back on the drinking to have a spare. You know what I mean? I'd be still watching a square TV before I would buy a flat screen. Okay, I wouldn't buy a flat screen TV until I had an extra fucking leg. That that's a that's a fucking guarantee. Okay, you can take that to the goddamn bank. All right, but you know, let's get to the real story here. Let's talk about this fucking Mac Daddy. He only has one goddamn leg, and he's still fucking slaying it. You know, I bet that got her fucking goat. The fact that, you know, this guy's got one leg and she's sitting there patting herself on the back of what a good person she is, that she's, you know, that she can see. Pe- I don't care about appendages. I care. I care about what's in here. Not what's hanging off your pelvis. Except for that, your dick, you know. Um, but who knows? Maybe Bruce Jenner doesn't want his. And even if you lost your dick, maybe you could buy his. Sure, it's a little bit older than you are, but you know. How many decathlons is your cock one? I'm not trying to belittle you. I am not. Don't put words in my mouth. Um, yeah, I, I, she, you know, that's fucking hilarious. I can't come into work today. Why? Well, I fucked around on my girlfriend. She took my fake leg. All you're going to hear is the boss. <laughs> on the other side. Fuck you. <laughs> What are you going to do, buddy? Hop down here and kick my ass? You're going to fall down? Um, anyways, all right. So I'm sure you're going to hear from the people with one fucking leg out there. You know, quit your bitching, okay? It can always be worse. All right? It can always be fucking worse. You know what I mean? For every person out there with one leg, all right, there's someone else in a loveless marriage, okay? And that's even worse. Every fucking day, waking up next to that person, man or a woman, and not feeling a fucking thing as they look into your eyes and they hand you that card on Valentine's Day, you might as well be talking to a chest of drawers. Um, All right. (laughs) Wow, that was dark. All right. Gathering and protesting versus rioting. Bill, I sympathize with the black community through all of this. Oh, God, this sounds like it's going to go off the rails. Hey, I have a black friend. But having said that, um, all right, it's ridiculous. Uh, Some cops, not all of them, can be total assholes with pent up anger and absolutely no control over their violent actions. And it's no excuse. You shouldn't have to do that job unless you're a saint who also knows how to kick ass. It's fucking hilarious. You want a superhero at that point. Where do you stand on the protests slash riots? Where's the line? Obviously, destroying someone's business is ridiculous and doesn't promote social change. But I also sometimes, he just, he misses a word, but also sometimes think, I think he was supposed to say, you got to crack a few eggs. Please use the next five to 10 minutes to solve this social problem. Hilarious. Um, I don't know. When I watch that, you're just watching the result of, uh, you know, what happened a long time ago. It's the fallout of all of that. 
um, the genius of uh, saying that one race was better than another race. So you could fuck over both races, but you adjusted how you were doing it. And you get to keep all the money at the top, right? Like you're basically sticking a dick in everybody's ass. But you go balls deep with one people and another people you're only halfway in. And then you get – so then the genius of that is you got someone with half a dick in their ass actually feeling lucky because it's not balls deep, right? And just the fallout of that <laughs> is what you're watching. Does that make any sense? Other than – I can't just totally blame super rich people on this or the controlling people throughout the centuries. But I will say that uh, just generally speaking, even that horse shit with the lady in Wisconsin just looking for the bad in Chicago people and blaming – all of the bullshit behavior on uh, draft day for the city of Chicago. Um, I just think, unfortunately, the inherent nature of people is to uh, be selfish cunts, to be fearful, to want more, to be worried about tomorrow, and uh, to want to be, I don't know, feel a little better than the other person. I mean, look at me at the Derby, right? Now, where I was seating, I was two steps above where those people were standing. And when I stood up, I could still see the fucking race. But I was like, I am a sitter. You are a stander. You are less than me. And next thing you know, I'm yelling at this person like I built the whole fucking area, right? Um, I just think it's in our nature to not get along. I hate to say that because it's the easiest fucking thing to do because it doesn't take any effort. Getting annoyed by somebody is effortless. Actually having empathy and seeing where the fuck they're coming from or maybe thinking about how you should say something and respecting somebody, it just takes a lot of fucking effort, you know? And, you know, in the heat of the moment, that usually doesn't happen, and uh, there you go. I overly simplified the whole fucking thing, but I think it's, uh, I don't know. I've been through Baltimore. I've been through Detroit, parts of Cleveland. Parts of Buffalo, all that Rust Belt and stuff, you know, parts of the South now, some of the places I went through. You can't believe how people are living in this country, and it's just it's fucking wrong. It's wrong. And then we're over there allegedly trying to rescue people in other countries, which is the dumbest shit ever. It isn't. We're just taking their natural resources and making – I mean, we aren't. I don't want to get into all of that shit, but I just don't think that this country is sitting there looking at other countries going, God damn it. Fuck. They're just not free. <laughs> we got to do something about this. It's bullshit. I don't. Bu- I don't buy into any of it. It's, uh, you know. And this is another thing too. I have no fucking idea how to turn that around. No fucking way how to turn it around on a s- societal level. I can tell, though, on an individual level, uh, you can totally turn around your life without a fucking doubt. You just have to fucking. You just can't. You got to become unstoppable. And the more down the fucking shit slide you are, the more unstoppable you have to fucking be. And that's just the way it is. Life isn't fucking fair. And for as bad as you got it, somebody's got it fucking worse. I mean, there's a guy with one fucking leg who can't go to work because he stuck his dick into something else, which he's fucking wired to do. You know, I mean, that woman taking that other guy's leg, she's basically saying God is wrong, you know, but she won't get called on it, will she? (laughs) Did any of that make any sense? I actually started daydreaming halfway through that. Um, This is Bill Burr, and this has been the Monday Morning Podcast. I would like all of you to go fuck yourselves, and I'll talk to you next. I'll actually talk. I'll check in on you on Thursday, but I'm basically going to talk to you. I talk to you every Monday. Thursdays, I'm just checking in on you. You know, just poking my head and seeing how the fuck you're doing. But this this day here, this is the real shit, right? If you like the real shit, and it is a pile of shit here, and if you would like to... uh, contribute to the Monday morning podcast effortlessly. Well, this actually takes a little bit of thought. Next time you go to Amazon to buy something, just click on, uh, go to billbird.com, click on the podcast page, and then just click on the Amazon little fucking app there, whatever the fucky thing you call it, the banner ad. It'll take you right to Amazon and then buy something if you want. And if you do, I get a little credit for driving some traffic that was already going to go there anyways. They kicked me a little bit of fucking money. Um, They're basically whoring off the love that they think you have for me in this podcast. That's what they're doing. They're trying to pile on that shit. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Thanks to everybody, sincerely, for the last two weeks. Um, 
I am wiped out. I am tired, but it was one of the great experiences that I've had in my stand-up career to get to go to all these cities that I had never been to, um, other than New Orleans. I had never been to any of these other ones as far as I can remember. And it was awesome. The people were great. The crowds were awesome. And, uh, 